What's going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays and I'm back on the channel bringing some more Ghost Runner 2 guides your way. Now today we're actually going to be doing another collectibles guide and this is going to be for level 5. This is going to be for Behind the Curtain. Now in this one we do have a variety of things to be able to collect. It is a fairly massive level as well and even though most of it is linear there's still a few things that you can easily miss just in case that you actually don't spot them on your minimap or if you don't spot them in general. Now in this guide we're going to be discussing how you're able to find every single one of these in the current method that I used to be able to grab every single one. So if you ever get stuck feel free to follow the footage and you can do the exact same thing that I did and I was able to grab all of these in my first through and run through of this level. Of course, massive thank you to 505 Games for the key and being able to give us early access so we were able to grab this content. And on top of that, make sure to keep an eye out for us when we partake in the Blood Run, which is going to be sponsored by 505 Games as well. With all that said and done, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into the guide. So we're kicking this guide off hot with a memory chip. We can find this fairly early on in terms of the level. What we do is get introduced to this brand new enemy and they basically are able to send out lasers or kind of like have a lash around them. And these are so frustrating. These ones easily in the whole game are the ones that frustrate me the most because they seem to track you to like no end. They're pretty decent in terms of accuracy and they're very hard to be able to dodge. But once you manage to get past this one enemy, what you actually do is use your gap jammer. You're able to get a cross and then over on the right hand side, once you've cleared that gap, you're able to then grab your first memory chip and you're off to a great start. So the next memory chip is only a short distance away. We do need to climb a little bit higher up into this room, but once you're able to get to the point where you can see on the screen, what you'll do is you'll know you're in the right location because you'll see the poles are jutting in and out of the wall. Underneath that area of the first one is going to be the memory chip, so all you need to do is just jump down here and then you can use your dash to get onto the platform and once you're there, you're able to then just pick up the memory chip from there. So we're on a bit of a roll when it comes to memory chips, so why not make it three? So as you can see, when we get to this bridge section right here, we're going to have a few enemies that are going to be on platforms. And what we want to do is just get our way across here, take out the enemies on the way. You can see I've died a couple of times, but this is just unfortunately how the footage was showing it. Uh, but as we go across a few of the poles that are jutting out of the walls, as soon as we get to the landing area, we just want to take a left, and that is going to be that third memory chip ready for us. So we've had enough of memory chips for the time being, so let's have a look at the blessing audio log. So what you need to do is get to this area, as you can see on the screen right here, which is going to show you the laser beams, it's going to show you the light beams that are going to keep the bridges active, and this is going to play a vital role a little bit later on in terms of the video, in terms of like the level, uh, because you do need to work around this mechanic so that you're always able to take down barriers or be able to put them up occasionally. Now what you need to do is just walk across this bridge with the light beam, so as long as you're obstructing it, you're absolutely fine, and then when you get across to the next section, what you need to do is take a right hand turn. This will put you into a separate room, you'll have Kira give you a little bit of an audio message to let you know you're in the right location and what you need to do here is almost like a very fast kind of like speed run of being able to go across all these walls because they will disappear very quickly. So what you need to do is do the wall run, you need to jump across ridiculously quick, you need to be able to use your dash as well so you can get across that gap and then once you're able to get into this room you'll then be granted access to the blessing audio log. To be able to get out of this room all you need to do is activate the switch and that will deactivate the electricity and that will allow you to be able to carry on with the rest of your journey. But we've had the fun item, so we're back onto the memory chip. So what we need to do is get to this location here where you can see with all the uh, the bridges that are disappearing. And you can see that I had a little bit of fun with this one. So if you climb up this way and use your wall run, what you can actually do is stand in front of the light beam and you can get all those enemies killed so you don't have to interact with them whatsoever. Now once you've gotten past this bit, you can then use your wall run after you've used your shuriken to break, break open that wall. And then you'll be able to do a slide all the way down and then you'll pick up the memory chip and you're off to a great start again. Now the next collectible you'll see way before you're able to collect this but you'll know its location. It's fairly simple to get but you obviously you need to you can't grab it the first time you see it. You need to progress a little bit further into the level and grab access to a brand new ability. This is for the Mask of the Arcane Sacrificer and all we need to do, to do in here instead is instead of looking at the item we just need to go across the rest of the level. Carry on as if it's the way it's designed. Once you get to the end of this room you'll be granted access to the shadow ability. Now how this one works is that it creates a decoy and once once that decoy of yourself is treated as being able to stand in front of that light beam for you, mean that you can technically be in two places at once, which is what the audio cue is giving you. Now on the way back you will fight a few enemies, so once you've managed to clear those out and then made your way back across the room, you're then able to interact with that light beam once again using the shadow ability, and then by standing in front of that and then you go in turning invisible, you can then go pick it up for free and you don't have to worry about getting locked out or being able to be killed or anything like that. So Mask of the Arcane Sacrificer is now yours. 
But of course, what would this be guide be if it wasn't for another memory chip? So actually, you can get this ridiculously quick from here as well. And all you need to do is just carry on the rest of the journey. So you go through the door now that your shadow clone is in front of that light beam. You can then go through to the next lit area. Make sure you de uh, use your shadow clone again to use the light beam so you can get across the bridge. And then deactivate it once you get to the other side by just swinging your sword or something like that. And then that will allow you to be able to go through the door. Once you through the door though and you see the light beam in front of you, what you want to do is take a right instead and you'll see a wall that has, allows you to be able to dash and instantly break that open and inside there is going to be your memory chip that you're taking. So next up is going to be the first of the two sword skins in this level and that is going to be the internal static. Now this one does take a little bit of a but like problem solving. Uh, this one can get a little bit confusing at times but I'll just show you on screen how I was able to do it so you can get an idea for this. Now what this one kind of requires you to be able to do to be able to progress into the next area is use clever use of your shadow clone skill and this will allow you to be able to put yourself in mid air between those light beams and then that will open up a certain section so you can use your shuriken to be able to open it up. What this also does is behind you it is able to interact uh, with certain areas uh, so you can actually go into a, another area and it keeps the sword skin locked behind a certain wall. So what you want to be able to do is deactivate this one that you can see on the screen here. You'll go into this area, you'll break through the wall by using your dash and you'll activate a switch so that you can turn off the electricity. This allows you access back into this room because once you deactivate your, uh, your shadow clone from one area it will mean that this door will now close and it will open up the one behind it so you need access into that room so you can then get the sword skill. Now of course just to be able to fix this one you just go across and you just do the other light beam so you replace your shadow clone over the other side and then once you've done that you go back through the uh, the deactivated laser wall you're able to go into the wall into the room the wall is now down and that allows you to be able to pick up the internal static skin. But not too far from here, we do have another weapon skin to be able to pick up, and this one's going to be the Electric Dream. And how you're able to grab this one is that you carry on the way that you would have been going through, so you activate the door, you go all the way through, you kill all the enemies on this platform or this, uh, this walkway here, carry on through to the other side, through the other door, and then once you're through that side, you're able to see this light pattern that is here, and you can see the sort of sword skin right there, and all you need to do is just use your Shadow Clone ability again. So you activate it here on the first one, you activate it on the second one as well, and that will allow you to be able to deactivate the wall so you can use your shuriken. Activating that gives you a short amount of time so you can then open up that door, and then you can be able to pick up the drop. Once you're over the other side though, all you have to do is just use your shuriken on the other side of the wall. This will open the door back up, and so you now have the weapon skin and you're able to leave. Progressing forward means that we get to see another memory chip and this one's going to be very hard for you to be able to miss So once you've managed to clear the way and you've gone back on track and you're able to use your shadow clone skill So you can then get across and everything like that You're able to just instantly find it and you have to go this way anyway for the story But this is just where that chip is so it's just so it's a nice easy one You just know that you're going to be grabbing this regardless but we're not done with the memory chips just yet, so we've got another one. So once you see this laser wall that we're going to be having in front of us here, you can see the path that we need to be able to take, and we need to use it. We need to time our jumps and our dashes effectively so that we can get through. And then we use our shuriken so we can activate the wall. Once we just a couple of wall rides, a couple of gap jammers, and then you're able to get up to this platform, and then the memory chip is yours. And we're on to the final of the two memory chips, and these ones can be found in, in the exact same room. Uh, they're just two, two separate sides of the room. So what you do is, you, once you get into this room here, which is going to be the main part of the cathedral, uh, what you do is, on the right-hand side, you're able to get this one nice and quickly, and it's just a bit hidden behind a pillar, but it's fairly easy to be able to spot, so make sure you do grab that one. Once you grab that one though, you're able to then go over to the other side of the room, so make sure you just kind of follow the path that you can see here, and you'll know you're in the right location because you're able to look down and you'll see that there's an air vent that leads straight back up here. If what you need to do is just time it so you can, you can land on this and then turn around, and then you can use your dash so that you can then get into this room. Once you're in this room, it's just a nice easy pickup, and then you can use the dash as well as getting onto the air vent so you can get back up to the top of the level, and then just a little bit of a journey to the, to the end, and then that just finishes off the level for you, and you'll have every single collectible in this level. But there you go, that wraps up every single collectible inside behind the curtain level, which is going to be level 5 on Ghost Runner 2. Let me know in the comments section down below, how did you get on with this level, how many times did you die? As you can see in the bottom right, it died around about 38 times, which is kind of crazy, but like I said, this was purely my first run through, and I was trying to find all the collectibles, and I was still fairly new when it comes to Ghost Runner. 
Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. It really does help the channel out. And if you did enjoy this guide and you want to see more from ourselves when it comes to Ghost Runner 2, as well as tune in for the Blood Run streams, then make sure you drop that like and subscribe so you can find your way back to the channel. But with all that said and done, that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on the next video.